Your losing game is garbage. You, yes you, the human being listening to these words right now, suck at sucking. You are failing at failing. All is not lost, however, because I'm going to give you a set of procedures to help you overcome your inability to overcome. What? You think I became your number one airdrops retrieved and your favorite official vigor partner's favorite official vigor partner by being handsome, leaving behind scents and aromas, manly, sweet, and dangerous, all at the same time whilst serenading your woman? Naturally? Does that seem normal? Well, it is normal for me, but thankfully for Norway and you, the listener, not only am I all of those fantastic things I described above, which is 100% true and not not for comedic effect, there is no way. I'm a middle-aged dork that wears glasses and plays a silly game too much, but I'm also generous and I am going to show you how to learn from your deaths. Welcome to Norway. You are in the drop zone and I am Jealous Fist. Yes, I am. And today, we're talking tactics, which allow us to outthink, outplay, and outperform your opposition. These videos I produce take a lot of time and some money. If you're interested in helping me to help other players like yourself, please check out jealousfist.com. Or if you're the type that needs something of value, freely given I ask nothing in return, go and sign up for the newsletter so you can be notified as soon as I start uploading spawn points and other maps I've prepared to give you the edge you need. Those maps are coming soon. Success or failure in vigor is 50% luck. I have no studies to back this claim, nor do I have an overeducated white cloak who I claim is an expert to back up what I just said. You'll have to hear me out. Disagree? How many times have you been killed simply because you took a right turn instead of a left? How many times have you been shooting at a guy, completely missing everything, only to dome him just as you lost the angle because his feet got caught on a rock? Have you ever been being chased to the exit and just as you're about to enter the exit's countdown your controller dies? I could go on and on. Why do I bring up these points? And what does that have to do with succeeding and failure? Because first you need to learn and recognize when there was nothing you could have done and you made rational choices and decisions with imperfect knowledge and despite your work and quick thinking, you still died and knowing what you knew at the time, there was nothing you could do. Learning when to recognize bad luck versus bad decisions comes with time and experience. When you do learn that, you will begin to not only feel better about a death, which can only be good, but you will then be able to study that death and learn from it and apply that new insight to future games. I know that sounds complicated, but I assure you this will happen naturally and on its own if you pay attention to what I'm about to say and are honest with yourself. Brutally honest. Err on the side of, I'm an idiot and it's always my own fault. Believe me when I say, there is no harsher critic and teacher than yourself when you've screwed up big. After you die, record it. Flashback recording is a massive advantage and increases your learning process by orders of magnitude. Play bays on the PlayStation and X boners on the Xbox. We enjoy this near magical power naturally and with no added costs or work within our respective consoles. I will not talk about how that works. You need to understand that on your own. Nintendo Bros playing on the Switch, I believe, do not have this feature. That sucks for you guys, but you can use a capture card. If you don't know what that is, then look it up and get one, or get an Xbox, if you love Vigor that much. Vigor is objectively experienced, best on Xbox, and I will fight anybody who disagrees. Recording and reviewing footage gives you an objective and an unbiased look at what actually happened when you died, not what you think happened. Try it and you'll see what I mean. I don't know how many times I've sworn I hit a guy in the head one to two times only to be killed, but then when I watch the fight afterwards, I can see quite clearly that my aim point was a good screen inch from the guy's head. There are many situations that I and all of you can think of that are similar. No matter how much attention you think you're paying or how perfect your perception of your perceptions is, you are nowhere near as good at recalling events as they actually happened than what the recording will show you. A good example would be the times you're engaged in a gunfight with a guy directly in front of you, dumping damage in there. Surely enough for a kill, only for you to drop dead. If you go back to shelter as soon as possible without hitting record, you would miss that the guy didn't kill you. It was, in fact, another dude behind you that got you. And you didn't realize because you hadn't read the player's names in the pre-game lobby. That's a tiny hint as well. Flashback recording the few minutes of the fight and watching it will allow you to see the stuff around you in the environment you couldn't see because you were focused on the danger in front of your stupid face. If you die in a situation like I described above, record back and watch to see if there was another guy. 
another similar situation to the one I just described previously is when you and a guy are face to face in a spray and pray situation and you both die at the same time in what appears to be a kill trade. Record back and I'll bet you see another guy pulling a third party on you. When should you flashback record? Anytime you have questions or something didn't feel right to you. Before you play another game, review the footage. This will help you calm down, or if your suspicions were right, make you more angry. But at least you'll know the truth, which is always a good thing, even if it hurts. If you strongly suspect your killer is using aimbot or use some glitch to gain an advantage, maybe you review the footage. If you were fighting more than one person, were aware from your peripheral vision another enemy was flanking or doing something, but were unable to fully pay attention due to the fight, Seeing what the other enemies did or were doing can also answer questions or give you tactics and ideas to use for yourself in the next fight. Honestly though, until you're very experienced and have a very good handle on the game, you should record all deaths, even if for cursory review, to gain extra knowledge and experience. Having and losing a fight only to reload into your shelter without reviewing the footage means you gained experience from one fight. If you review the footage, you get to experience the fight twice. This is a huge benefit. Think about that. Think of experience as a giant toolbox of possible solutions for problems you don't need to relearn or think of on the spot. Experience equals ready-made tactics. Simply add water and pull the tab. Before I get into how I think you should approach owning failure, I want to say that this forthcoming process is not set in stone and is meant to be general purpose so that all of you can make it your own. That's a fancy way of saying see what does and doesn't work for you and make adjustments to fit your own circumstances. There is no one way in this game or life for that matter. First step after death. What is your question? What do you need to know about this specific game? Were you walking through the woods, heard a shot and are dead? Your question should be, where did that come from? Were you running towards the exit with an irradiated airdrop close to death but consumed iodine within five meters of success with another 10 seconds of iodine protection only to die one meter from the exit? How could that happen? Record to find out. Sounds silly, but you need to have a goal other than being better when watching the footage. Do you understand what actually happened? When you do understand what happened, were you right? Were you wrong? If so, ask yourself why were you wrong? Are you watching knowing there was nothing you could do? If so, after watching it, do you still feel that way? If you now feel there was something you could have done better, what was it? What other situations does this death apply to, if any? at all. I'm going to cut you off on that line of thinking and tell you right now that all deaths apply in some way to most other situations. And unless you've played 10,000 games, you should be reviewing your deaths. And until you've played 50,000 games, you must review your deaths, if only to keep your sense of reality intact. I would be very surprised to find out if someone on this earth has watched more footage and fights in this game than myself. I don't say that to brag. Honestly, uh, it does make me feel a little shamed. Uh, I say this so you understand that even someone like me that usually knows what happened happened can and is still wrong about what actions occurred when or who did what. I'm wrong all the time. I think only something like 16 or so people have more games on the leaderboards than me and I bet if you ask them, they would tell you the same. We are all only human as of yet. Here's what I want you to start doing when you die or fail. Remember, I've spoken in terms of dying in fights, but everything I'm saying applies in failing to achieve any goal, objective, or challenge. Upon failure, decide if you need to stay in the game and spectate. Sometimes spectating and watching the remaining players and seeing what they do or how they react to things is enough to answer your questions. If so, move on and skip the next steps to save time. Run another game or go outside and remember there's a world full of beauty. Flowers, girls, money, and reading are all acceptable pursuits when one is not in Norway. So if you're spectating, this means you have a question. Flashback, record a duration of time long enough to catch all the action you need to review before too much time has elapsed and you miss the action. Remember, if you go to record back three minutes on your Xbox, but you've been spectating five, you lose those first two minutes. Before watching the footage, form your question or opinion of what you think happened. Write it down if you need to. Watch the footage beginning to end one time. Pause to think about what you saw. Then fast forward to the particular part of the footage that is questionable and watch it closely. Be honest. Do not 
lie to yourself. There is no one to impress. You need to know what actually happened to get better. Were you right? Were you wrong? Reckon with and accept the results of the subjective review. Was there anything you could have done differently? Multiple things? Think of them all and write them down. The mind learns what the body does. Writing down and thinking through different scenarios is a mental shortcut to experience and your mind will retain some of those ideas and bring them forth for you in future similar situations without you having to intentionally, which causes distraction, recall them into being at a stressful time or place. Were you neither right nor wrong was what happened very strange. If so, make note of that as well. When you get footage like that, try and hold on to it. Sometimes later on you'll hear or read about something and then you will have your answer after watching that saved footage. I've had years long mysteries like this solved only through patience. I know this sounds like quite the task. Usually this whole process takes less than one minute and your written lessons learned, which should be in a notebook specifically for this purpose, looks something like do not start climbing ladders onto roofs when an LMG trio is waving and shooting at me while sending messages that say, if you climb a ladder, I will kill you, so don't do that. Or something like, do not boost the lobby with my remaining crowns when all I have is a PM pistol, three rounds, and a lot of hope, end quote. Which is an actual note. <laughs> Which is an actual note I wrote to myself about three years ago. I know it sounds like I should have known better, but it's really the fault of jealous wife for letting me drink an entire case filled with bottles of reindeer piss when she had the credit cards and left me by myself all day. How dare she? Not cool. She should know how I am. Often, after you've worked your way through to understanding exactly what went wrong with your game, you will find yourself angry. Sometimes disappointed will be the feeling, but usually frustration, if the failure was minor, or rage, if major, is the emotion you'll find yourself dealing with. This is the hardest part of vigor, and the one I struggle with most, but I've found my way to dealing with it, mostly in a more healthy way. If you're interested in that, I made a video about it. Click up there. I am currently doing a bunch of work on my website and I'm considering creating an actual document, a sort of vigor themed after action report. Let me know in the comments if anyone would be interested in that. If enough people want the document, it will be worth my time to draft it. Meanwhile, I am also working on getting generic maps and spawn points. Yep, that's right, it's actually finally happening up on the website for you guys. You wouldn't believe the advantage afforded simply from having seen some of this stuff. I think, not sure, that if you sign up on the email newsletter on jealousfist.com, you will get an email whenever the site is updated, letting you know as soon as the maps are L-I-V-E. Are you interested in learning to shoot like I do in my videos? Copy my controller settings from the video right there. Please like, subscribe, comment, and most importantly, share. If you aren't following me on Twitter and you play Nintendo Switch, you are screwing up big time. Apparently I have one, yep, one Nintendo following me on there and he's gonna continue to get the 1,000 free crowns I put on there randomly at will with no work because he has no competition. If you play Switch and aren't following at FistJealous on Twitter, you are leaving free money on the table. Don't say I didn't tell you. And uh, sorry bro, it wouldn't be fair of me to not at least let them know you're eating their lunch and you know who you are. Playbase and XBoners. Follow at FistJealous on Twitter for free codes for your consoles as well. We taught Oprah everything. She knows here in Norway about generosity. You get a code and you get a code. Oprah stuffs her codes under dirty seats. Gross. I stuff them into clean shiny videos for you. How about that? Because as always, I am your number one airdrops retreat, 14,000 and counting, all time, all systems, and your favorite official vigor partner's favorite official vigor partner, Jealous Fist. Bye.